I'm Jessica Terrell with Take 30 News. And you may not be aware, but October is an especially special month because it marks Adopt-A-Shelter Dog Month. And here to talk about that with me today is Ms. Martha Thomas, who is a board member with Octiba Hall County Humane Society. Ms. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's just get started. I know that one of the main questions many people have when looking at adopting a dog is why should they go to an animal shelter humane society to adopt rather than going to a pet store and buying a dog? Absolutely. Well, um, we at the Arctibaha County Humane Society, um, Starkville Animal Shelter, we take in over 1,700 animals each year. That's dogs, cats, um, the occasional bird, mm -hmm. um, hamster, things like that. Um, and so we have a uh, pet overpopulation problem mm -hmm. in Mississippi. I stuttered on that, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but we have a pet overpopulation problem in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, and we have so many pets out there and not enough homes. Right. Um, and so those who adopt from us are able to save the life of that mm -hmm. pet that they are taking into their home. So it's really about saving lives. It's not just, you know, getting a simple pet, but you're really making a difference you by adopting. Are. Yes. Well, I know that many people at home watching are college students. And mm -hmm. one thing we all know about college students is that we're poor. <laughs> so how much does it cost to adopt a dog? Sure. Um, well, our adoption fees start off um, at $50. Mm -hmm. And that $50 adoption fee covers the animal spay or or neuter surgery oh, wow. and that animal when you adopt him or her is going to mm -hmm. be up to date on all vaccinations. Really? Um, you will still need to take that animal to the veterinarian um, in the area and make sure you know that they are um, up to date on their vaccinations mm -hmm. as they grow older. Um, but yeah, starting at $50, you can bring a new best friend home. Well, that's wonderful because normally when you buy a dog, you have to go ahead to a separate visit and take care of the beginning shots and everything anyways, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. Well, next thing I wanna know is if someone's considering adopting a dog, when is the best time to come? What are your hours of operation? Sure, we are open Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. 10 a.m. until 5 a.m., or excuse me, we're open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., mm -hmm. and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and we also have on our website um, pictures and names of animals that are available for adoption, uh -huh. so people can check it out there as well at www.ochsms.org. Well, and if, if you want to come and look several times, can you keep coming back until you find that perfect friend? Yes, absolutely. Come on back anytime. Well, that's wonderful. Now, I know another thing is a lot of people want to support Adopt a Shelter Dog Month, but they don't know that they're ready for that commitment. Right. Are there avenues for them to be involved and to support and not actually adopt quite yet? Absolutely. There are several opportunities um, and just quickly running through them uh, the first is encourage your family and friends to adopt a shelter dog or cat um, and also encourage those family and friends to have their pets spayed or neutered so we can help to decrease the pet overpopulation problem in, in Mississippi um, another thing is you can foster animals um, a two-week commitment as this pet with special needs um, needs help or is going to be transported to a humane society up north or to their forever home can help save that life also, volunteering and donating is a great way to help out. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Ms. Thomas, for joining sure. us today. Again, October marks Adopt a Shelter Dog Month, so see what you can do to support um, this wonderful month and check into maybe adopting a pet or donating or volunteerism. That's all we have for today. This is Jessica Terrell. Coming up next, Take 30 Sports. Thanks. Welcome to Take 30 Sports. The MSU football team is five weeks into the season. Just how well are the Bulldogs performing? I'm Max Ryan. And I'm Carolina Mitchell. The MSU women's soccer and volleyball teams have been struggling lately. We'll have the latest stats. But first, let's discuss the football team. The Bulldogs will be heading to Lexington this weekend, ranked in the top 20 and undefeated. Max, what do you think the Bulldogs need to do to win this game? Some key things I think the defense should focus on is stopping the passing game. The Bulldogs are allowing a lot of yards to the air, and the Wildcats average almost 230 yards per game. Another thing the defense should prepare for is getting to the quarterback. The Wildcats are starting freshman quarterback Jalen Whitlow, who had to come in last week against South Carolina after starting quarterback Maxwell Smith was injured. In that game, Whitlow threw two interceptions. This game will be his first start as a quarterback, and the defense needs to really take advantage of his inexperience, and they can turn those into points. Offensively, the Bulldogs' biggest issue is dropped passes. The wide receivers have got to take care of the ball. Another thing the Bulldogs should focus on is the running game. Ladarius Perkins averages almost 100 yards per game, and the Wildcat defense allows almost 200 yards per game. 
The Bulldogs should be able to effectively run the ball against the Wildcats. They definitely have the running backs to wear out that Kentucky defense. If the Bulldogs can take care of the ball and execute simple plays, they should leave Lexington with their second straight conference win of the season. I definitely have to agree with you on that, Max. If Tyler Russell keeps playing the way he has been, the Bulldogs should absolutely come home with the win. Russell has really thrived in his role of starting quarterback this year. After sitting behind Chris Ralph and seeing limited playing time last year, Russell has proven he has what it takes to lead the Bulldogs to victory. Russell has been playing really good football, but he's only completed 59 passes out of an attempt at 106. But these numbers are really not a fair indication of how well he is playing. A lot of dropped passes have skewed these numbers here. Russell has also done a really good job of taking care of the ball. In the first four games, he has only thrown one interception. He's been hitting his receivers with accuracy, and he knows when to get rid of the ball. In the first couple of games, his awareness in the pocket was lacking, but the more experience he gets, the better he's gotten at knowing when the defenses are going to break away towards him. He's thrown for around 200 yards per game and has thrown eight touchdowns and even has one rushing touchdown. Russell was named Offensive Player of the Week in the SEC for the Week 2. That was only the second time an MSU football quarterback received the award since 1991. You can watch Russell and the rest of the Bulldogs Saturday when they return to SEC play in Kentucky. Away from football, the MSU Lady Volleyball team continues to struggle after losing to LSU in Florida this past weekend, increasing the losing streak to six. The 6-8 six and eight Tigers overcame a 2-1 to one deficit, increasing their win streak over the Bulldogs to 13 consecutive matches with a 3-2 to two win. Freshman Roxanne McVeigh's record-setting defensive performance, racking up 50 digs and five sets, wasn't enough to push MSU over the hump. It was the same song and dance against the 12th-ranked Florida Gators when the team faced a straight sets loss of 25 to 14, 25 to 9, and 25 to 18. Nine Gator players combined for 48 kills and won the defensive battle with 56 to 46 edge and digs. McVeigh had a team high 15 digs in the loss. The Bulldogs are now 4 and 10 overall and 0 and 5 in SEC play. The team will travel to Auburn Friday in the beginning of a five-game road trip. The MSU soccer team faced two SEC opponents over the weekend also. On Friday, the Lady Bulldogs faced LSU in Starkville. The Tigers beat the Bulldogs 1-0. Junior Elizabeth Sullivan had two shots of, on goal, both of which she missed, and senior goalie Skylar Rawson missed the game on Friday as punishment for the red card she received the Sunday before against Tennessee. The Lady Bulldogs also faced number six Texas A&M on Sunday in Starkville. The Aggies defeated the Bulldogs 2-0 in a game played in the pouring rain. The Bulldogs head to Auburn on Friday to take on the Tigers. That's all we have for sports. Join us next time. And stick around because we will hear about a beautiful young girl whose wishes came true thanks to one event held on MSU's campus. Don't go away.